Hi, welcome to ToddFun.com, where I do what's fun and unfortunately also depressing because I'm going to tear apart my quadcopter and see what's inside and I might not get it back together. At least if it's back to any type of flying order, it might not look like this anymore. It's a great flying product, a uh, quadcopter. I, uh, in the show notes, you'll see a link to my review of uh, going through it and how to properly use it and clean it. and. Uh, and seeing a fly and if you want one uh, you can get one and help support my channel so I'm curious about the charging because um, I do I do kind of want to make it to where I can make a, my own lipo charger I mean all I have to do is have a 3.7 lipo charging circuit and then I can just plug this straight into this I won't have the malarkey of having to wire it into this like you saw in the review video um, yeah that's you know assuming that the charging circuits are, are most likely in this thing uh, maybe I'll just cut them out of here and make them. I don't know. We'll see. But I'd like to do that. If I can do it with this teardown, I will. If not, it'll be another video. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see this thing uh, opened up. So, to the bench. So, the unfortunate teardown. I, I've always tore my toys apart. Maybe that's why I didn't have a lot of toys growing up. I'd tear them apart. Well, we'll see if we can get it back together, too. Um, it's kind of like two clamp, two shells that are essentially just glued together and then it has some sort of flashing edging that's glued along the edge. So my first attempt I think, and I'll try and either cut it out or speed it up, is I'm going to try and dig out as much of this trim work as possible and then I'm going to try and slice along the edges and see how deep I can slice with a razor blade um, and, then, and then see if I can pry it apart and then we'd be in. It's a little uh, board carrier here. We can pop off. So that's a little board carrier. This was a little shroud for the charger and on off switch. Well, there we go. We're inside. We have an antenna. We have our blue, our front lights. We have our blue tail lights. We have our 3.7 lithium ion battery. Uh, that chug plugs in and runs that. We have a little chip on board uh, cob here. That's going to be for the radio because the radio goes right into that. So that's a little radio transmitter receiver. We'll get a closer look at these things with a microscope, um, with a USB microscope. I'll fix this blue LED before we test it. I want to test it now that it's apart. You can see the charging pin there, which has four connectors, so it's reversible, meaning you're not going to hurt it by charging it, by flipping it around. It's just going to change which way it's going to, uh, which way it's going to hook up is all. Um, we have the power switch, of course. 
and it's tough to get a real good look at the circuit board from this angle. We'll take a flyby here in a minute and then we'll look at it with a USB microscope. But, more importantly, will it fly? Well, I got it cleaned up a bit and uh, it's looking really nice and clean. Uh, you can see we have the headlights in front and then we have the two blue tail lights and I fixed the one that I damaged. I put some new shrink rack on and soldered it up. We have the LiPo, the 3.7 LiPo, and then we have our control board. Um, if we look at the rotors, um, what's interesting is from this angle they look pretty flat. Likewise from this angle they look pretty flat and straight. But from this angle there's definitely a kink um, like they're tilted in on the sides. Likewise on this side there's a bit of a tilt. I'm kind of trying to determine if that's just an assembly issue or if it's intentional. It does look like there's a bit more of an aggressive angle than over on this side. So it could make sense, but let's take a quick look at the board. Looking up some of the data um, and doing a voiceover, this is a radio controller, transmit receive, 16 megahertz, or yeah, megahertz. It solders onto the main board, so it's sort of a purchase separately. There's the gyro, three axis of freedom gyro that it's going to use by the microcontroller. Uh, there's a motor controller, a pass-through motor controller of some kind, the CT9926. That's the back side of the charger there I'm pointing at. Um, and the power switch um, I'm pointing at. I'm coming over to those red and white are the uh, LEDs uh, that hook up. Um, the other red and white are the other LEDs. The black wire is the antenna uh, for the input for the radio. It comes in right there, just one little short stubby. The new Avant Ton, uh, Nuvantan chip is a microcontroller. It's actually a 8051 based microcontroller, so it's actually a pretty powerful chip and it's going to do all the brains of this thing. I'll have links to all these chips plus these uh, transistors I'm pointing at underneath Todd. If you go to toddfun.com, you'll see uh, under beginning tab, there's a tab at the top that says beginning electronics, and I have links to how to look up different types of chips, including those transistors. Now I'm pointing at the freewheeling diodes. Uh, so that the motors can be driven without kickback, um, EMF kickback. And that's the charge hookup and the on-off switch is the white knob. I'm just panning across some more um, like this, this MA3. I couldn't find one myself, but those codes have to be looked up to find out what type of transistors or controls are in those. Um, that's it. Okay, we got, a, we got the brains of this thing wired up to some construction board here and uh, We'll see if she'll take off before we go looking deeper. Turn this on. Turn this on. Well, she synced. Okay, here we go. Woohoo! She don't like to be stable, I don't think. Well, it looks like uh, by shifting the LiPo battery back a little bit and the board forward, it kind of got some of the weight distribution better. So it's probably just a weight distribution issue. So now it doesn't fight itself so much. One nice thing that's interesting is that we can see how it does the rotation in the plane. It actually uses the uh, rotation of the blades in order to you know, counter each other. Normally they counter each other and it changes that so as to cause a, a rotational torque. So I'll do the, see? Those two quit spinning and these kept spinning. Essentially it maintained lift with these. Tried to spin them up to maintain lift and then r ramp these down so that you would start getting a a torque motion. And I'll do it with this, I'll turn the other way. See? See, it does the same thing but the other motors. Well, that's
that's the uh, that's the end of the teardown of the Millennium Falcon. Uh, we get a good look at uh, at the insides and and the circuitry. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, I'm still a little worried that this this looks sort of like it's like it's tilted. You know, it doesn't look straight to me. And so one of the things I might try and do is I might try and um, heat them up and straighten them and see if putting this together nice and level like it helps with its flying or maybe it's designed that way. I, I can't really tell if that little bit of an angle is supposed to be there or not. But you know this is an experiment. I'll straighten it and put it back together. I have some uh, U UHU Creators Styrofoam um, glue. You get it at Michael's. I'm fairly sure I'll be able to uh, glue these two pieces back together just fine. Um, it's going to be just as sticky and tacky and and you know I'll have to wrap it and press something in there real good and and see if I can get it to be back together and if I do I'll, I'll put up a short video of just showing it flying if I get it done that way um, and, and I'll also report back if changing um, straightening that frame helped at all too but that's the circuit that's the inside of the Falcon um, really fun to see what's in there I did not tear down the controller um, mostly because two reasons. I'll probably be taking the charger out of here so I can charge the Falcon separately if I don't have to do this chain thing to get the thing to charge. And at that point in time um, I'll, I'll make a video where I show taking the charging circuit out of here, show the insides of what this is. That way this will just be a remote control and the charging will be completely standalone. And This will just run on double A's forever. So. Okay, uh, if you like the video, and if you look forward to the other ones, let me know which you're looking forward to, either the trying to get it working again or the, or the charging conversion and the inside of the controller. I'd like to know where you want to go. Uh, I have other videos that I can work on too, but uh, let me know. Um, thumbs up. Thanks for joining.